welcome to uh, 2020 trends, uh, design trends by UX Pin. Uh, today, uh, in today's interview, I'm joined by Wojtek. Uh, Wojtek, please tell us a little bit uh, about yourself. Hi, uh, I'm Wojtek Alexander. Uh, I'm a content strategist and content designer. I work currently for one of the largest uh, banks in the Nordics, uh, where I'm part of the CX and design department and together with UX designers and uh, content designers and service designers, we try to uh, find out the solutions that will make millions of customers happy. Uh, apart from that, I'm also a UX writing trainer uh, here in Poland, so you're free to join my uh, course and, uh, and find out more about UX writing, uh, which is like the discipline that currently grows, and I'm happy to be part of that process. <laughs> Thank you. Well, uh, not to, you know, like uh, tell everyone your age, but I, I know that you are pretty long in this, uh, in this uh, industry, aren't oh, you? Yeah. Well, um, more or less, it's uh, almost 20 years now since we now have 2020. So I date my beginnings in the, after the Y2K crisis. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I was happy not to worry about it at work. <laughs> um, so since then I was um, yeah, wearing uh, a lot of hats, information architecture, technical writing, uh, type uh, setting, DTP and uh, usability and uh, content design eventually and content strategy uh, now. Yeah, but your whole career is pretty close to designers and product makers, right? So yes. can can you tell me a little bit, um, because you, I, I'm assuming you have like this uh, amazing perspective of how uh, content writing or uh, UX writing is changing. And can you tell me what is your favorite trend that you anticipate for 2020? Uh, well, my favorite trend or a wish is like a maturation of, of all our disciplines. Because like, uh, like you said, I'm kind of moving between product managers and UX designers and uh, localization experts and uh, customer support um, or, and receiving like perspectives from, from various angles. And um, all those disciplines working together kind of transform over the years. And also the UX writing discipline or content design, which is kind of getting more and more, you know, the term is becoming more and more popular. Um, so maturation is one of, of those trends that uh, I think will happen in many areas. And especially as far as uh, UX writing is concerned, because uh, I think we already know that UX writing is valuable and a lot of companies have discovered that and they started to invite uh, people on board to help them with, uh, with writing and with communication with users. So that already happened last year, like the, the bloom of, of, of uh, job offers and, and, and uh, explosion maybe in some, some countries. Uh, yeah, so we already have people and they are basically a team of one supporting a lot of have proven their value and will the team of one become a team of many so so i think uh they will be teams uh, larger groups working on, on together with uh, with other disciplines researchers uh, and designers ui designers ux designers maybe even service designers uh, to provide value and being involved in different uh, stages of, of the product development process. Mm, so that, that's what I think will happen this year and will kind of be a very welcome. Uh, <laughs> okay, so what you're saying uh, is that people are uh, like the whole companies are more uh, maybe acknowledging the U UX writing, like the necessity of having a UX writer, and not maybe not only one, but but more diverse uh, teams, right? Because yeah. well, I think it's a it's a it's a 
pretty general uh, trend for, I mean, like whole uh, design uh, industry to be more um, more conscious about what uh, what the design is, uh, where the design is going to. So, would you say uh, inclusive language is something that uh, is uh, going to be like really good trend in twenty twenty as well? Oh, I'm happy you mentioned that because yeah, that's my my next favorite trend or uh, phenomenon, like being inclusive and working on inclusive language, like. Uh, Webster uh, Dictionary, they kind of uh, announced that the word of the year is they, the personal pronoun used for the first person. So to be more inclusive and to not to be like uh, biased, gender biased and, and stuff like that. So inclusive language is something that we will be working on as a discipline, I guess. There's a lot of uh, uh, publications going on, uh, on uh, about it. I, for example, in, the, in, in forums like uh, Slacks, uh, communities, uh, there are already se separate channels uh, related to inclusivity and uh, accessibility. So, so that's a thing, and and I'm really happy to see that that we're kind of putting uh, words to action. And it's going to yeah, be pun intended. <laughs> uh, uh, so, so that we can, uh, with language, build that positive experience of people being embraced uh, and not excluded uh, from products and services or, or society in general. Yeah. So, so that's a great trend. And I hope I will be working on it myself. And I will encourage everybody else to do that as well. I mean, I think, uh, thank you, and I totally agree. I, I wish, uh, I, I, I hope that, that it's going to be a great trend in 2020, of course. But on the other hand, I have this thought that um, like really big uh, number of companies still uh, put business at front of everything they do. And uh, I guess it's, um, one thing is like really important to be accessible and inclusive and everything, right? And uh, on ethical side, but on the other hand, or like business uh, business side, you have to somehow like put like language research or something like prove to the business, you know, like tie hats uh, that this is what is really important. Do you do you, like do you plan on doing something like that, or do you think that uh, this like behavioral re research is something that is going to be trending in UX writing as well? Uh, I think yes, because like uh, people, people as as we said, like uh, teams or people will be kind of becoming more mature and aware about what they do, and it, it, what you're saying is actually aligned totally with what we do now. Uh, at the bank where we research together during usability tests, uh, preparing specific scenarios uh, to test and to research the language and how language we use as a product affects people, um, whether they are uh, corporate customers or private customers, how they are different and how to talk to them so that they can uh, uh, don't feel overwhelmed or uh, overlooked uh, or or looked uh, f uh, or that we so that we don't sound condescending and, and things like that. So uh, research will be a thing for some teams, especially those that have capacity or uh, or or the need, uh, like the, the the designer's personal need to be more aware and also like uh, to the point with the language they um, they use and that's actually the, the biggest trend that Sarah Richards within her book and speeches about content design is promoting like to be aware and to use the language that the people use uh, in uh, in real life and uh, a lot of writers kind of we were taught to use a totally different language and we have to teach us ourselves out of it and uh, understanding the language and how it works in the real world 
is a thing to to help us to be more precise and, and helpful and uh, and to build the experience actually that people expect to get um, and and words are a really important part of that so researching uh, either behavioral research or usability testing will help us do that and i hope to see more people talking about it on the internet on the forums or publishing papers or, or giving speeches at conferences because uh, that's something sometimes you learn so unexpected things how specific words or phrases or uh, work and how you for example thought you were helpful while people didn't even expect you to be helpful uh, at some points so so this will help us rule out assumptions because a lot of our work writing work is still based on assumptions and obviously these are like goodwill thing like we we know about readability and accessibility and we care about it mm, but we will get more data to to prove our, uh, our point and we will be able to use that data as you said to talk to the business and and show them how we can help to reach the business goals uh, with language or by by working on that uh, so and not even to just uh, say that the business is wrong but to say hey we can do this and that to match your goal and to help you and you we will all be faster uh we're there where we want to be <laughs> yeah cool i i get you uh, i i wish that uh, because uh, I, I hear all the time this uh, the kind of saying that uh, design teams are just all about being uh, everything being nice and pretty. And I, I guess like a UX writer is like someone who is supposed to like know a lot of words and that's it. But it's going, it's getting more and more like uh, close to business, right? Or like data influenced and, and everything. So. Um, I, I guess that gives like others, like people from, you know, like other teams from, uh, from the company, the perspective of how actually design or like word design, language design uh, influences the, the, the business goals, just as, it, as you said. Yeah, it's, yeah, because it's not poetry. Yeah, it's exactly. All, <laughs> it's all based and grounded on, on research and deep thinking. So, so yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine a product with like little red <laughs> rhymes or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that could be fun. Maybe that's a trend for 2021. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Let's see. <laughs> you mentioned also that um, your one of your goals is uh, to not make people overwhelmed by by uh, by the language, so that they get what they expect. But uh, but do you think that it's uh, something with, with the trend of minimalism? It has something to do with it because there's this huge trend in, in design. Well, actually, people are um, going e e uh, to either direction, either minimalism or maximalism. And they you know like like big paintings and illustrations, etc. Do you do you think there is even uh, a discussion like that in UX writing? Well, I think there's no discussion. <laughs> I mean, like, um, in the sense that uh, we're always uh, on the minimalist side, uh, where we can uh, try to be concise and informative at the same time. And that's obvious because, like, for example, in mobile apps or responsive uh, apps, you are really concerned about real estate on the screen and how you all... Um, align all the elements including words and words becoming now atoms or words or phrases becoming atoms uh, in the whole design language or design system so uh, that's probably not the case and sometimes obviously you have to be a little more uh, eloquent and saying more uh, and using different uh, UI um, elements to, to, to to not overwhelm people and still be look that there's a show that there's uh, enough information 
uh, up front. And if there's more, uh, you can always reach out there. But like being concise will probably still be a thing for UX writers uh, for some time. Uh, yeah, because it's not only like UX writing is supporting people on their tasks. So we're not there to tell them stories. We're there to show them the way. We're there to help them understand something that is maybe less um, uh, obvious to them uh, or some explain some peculiarities or, um, or simply confirm that they are on the right track. So it's this, we need to be this helpful friend uh, who is not over talkative, but uh, gives just enough information uh, at the right time. So, so yeah, but maximalism probably, no. <laughs> In the sense like, uh, we will always uh, choose to be, to, to say less is more. Yeah. So I, I think um, uh, usability or, and being like user friendly is uh, an evergreen uh, trend and it's going to be still trending in 2020s, right? It will, it will, it will be, you know, it's just like the basic of, uh, basis of, of, of what we do. Uh, if we don't do that right, then anything else that we do all the experience will not be if not ruined then it won't be that effective or as we wish it was so uh, definitely the basis is the basis and there's no runaway from that <laughs> okay so uh thank you very much boy take with that conclusion that some things uh evolve and mature and some things shouldn't change uh, I, I think uh, I'd like to thank you very much for your time and for joining us and for showing us the perspective of UX writing in, in, in design and product design. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.